Welcome to Wager Talk TV. I am Kelly Stewart with Carmine Bianco at Carmine Bianco WT on Twitter and Andrew McKinnis at McKinnick Picks. Excuse me. Uh, we're talking NHL hockey season 2021. Look, you guys, there is a lot of things that have changed this year. I'm really curious to see how you guys are going to approach this season. But before we do, I just wanted to give you guys a little shout out. Puck time Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern. That's early for us here on the West Coast, but make sure you guys check it out. Andrew and Carmine are on every single day, and they wanted to give you guys a little early bird special. 800 bucks is what their season package is normally, but right now, $399 with coupon code NHL99. You're getting an extra 99 bucks off the already discounted price. These are the two guys that I get my hockey picks from, point blank, period, the end. That's why I wanted to do a video with them. Carmine, I'm going to start with you. This season, what has changed? I mean, obviously, given the circumstances, we know that there's not going to be fans. But there's a lot of things that have changed here in hockey that I was not aware of until you guys had both mentioned it to me. Yeah, it, uh, we're, we're happy it returns on, on January 13th. And, uh, uh, and for a little while, it seemed like it might not actually start. But it's a later start. Typically, hockey obviously starts in October, puck drops on a uh, new NHL season. A reduced schedule this year, 56 games, as opposed to the 82 that we normally have. And because of, obviously, the current situation with COVID uh, in the U.S. and in Canada, uh, in the NHL, uh, there's a realignment of divisions now. So um, they're trying to keep teams in their specific time zones for the most part. So there's uh, there, there's a realignment of, in the U.S., there are uh, three different divisions of eight teams. And then uh, because uh, players cannot travel in and out of Canada, there is an all-Canadian uh, division called the North, which has seven teams. Uh, and um, the way the playoffs will work this year is the top four in each division will make the playoffs. And then obviously it'll be one, one versus four, two versus uh, three. And then uh, we get a division winner and move on to the semis and, and then the Stanley Cup finals. So Carm, sticking with you really quick, what, how has the schedule really changed here? I know that it can definitely impact things like season win totals, as well as which teams used to play each other that no longer do, such as like strength of schedule, things of that nature. Yeah, it's the interesting thing. Obviously, of course, as I mentioned uh, previously, there's 56 games in the schedule as opposed to, to 82. And some books are coming out now with uh, point totals for teams. And if you shop around, there's there's a lot of dispar disparity uh, in those. So you can find some pretty good prices if, if, uh, uh, if you want to fade a couple teams. Um, but the one thing that I take away from this is it's the interesting thing. Uh, there's a twist to it in, in that uh, the NHL has taken almost like a page out of the MLB uh, playbook. Uh, because they want teams to travel, their travel uh, to be very minimal, they've set up almost a, uh, a baseball type schedule, some of these teams. So you'll see, um, let's say Toronto and Vancouver, they, may, they will play at least twice, uh, maybe three times uh, in a row over the course of either three, uh, uh, three or five days. So much like a baseball series, you're playing the same team three games in a row. What this does uh, obviously is it, it creates opportunities. And I think Andrew will agree with me as far as like totals go, where in games two and three, uh, you may see uh, adjusted totals. And if they aren't adjusted, um, you can take advantage of them. Andrew, Carm so, mentioned things like series prices here, right? Even though they're not a series, they're playing it as such. So, A, what are your thoughts on the new division and how are you going to approach this 2021 season? It's very interesting. You're seeing teams play each other more than you usually would have. So, of course, that's a huge thing to take into account. Uh, and matchups, like you said, it's one thing that I was going to mention that you already mentioned, Kelly, is just looking at a, how a certain player plays against a certain team how a certain goalie performs against a certain team. I really am a big fan of matchup history, recent history for certain teams against them. But as far as the total market goes, just to get into totals for a second, we're going to see some backs-to-backs. -backs. And not just back-to-backs, we're going to see, you know, to take another page out of the MLB or baseball metaphor, uh, it's kind of like when you, when you see a pitcher. You know, you see him once, maybe you see him again in a couple of weeks span. Now they're going to see the same players back-to-back -back times. Maybe they're going to know what they're going to be doing a little bit more. Maybe you're going to know a goaltender's weaknesses. So I look at that as being a big weakness uh, for some teams that might not have that depth, that might not have that great coaching. And I think that right now, during this season, more than ever, 
the backup goaltender is going to be a vital part of a team because if you're playing three games against the same team, you know, back to, one back to back and then one day off again, you're not going to have the same goalie out there. You're going to have a backup out there and you're going to need him to play meaningful games, not just the games against the weak teams, meaningful games every time they're out there. And another thing about this season, the NHL is allowing teams to carry a lot more players. I believe it's at least six more players per team, not on the bench, but um, have the option to start them. So in one game, they might say, hey, look, this guy didn't play his best. The next game against the exact same team, they'll bring somebody new out. So I think as far as that goes, people that are handicapping this sport, you have to check the lineups. You have to be able to make sure you're looking at things because that will impact the totals market. All right, Cam, or Carm, excuse me, I'm going to kick it back to you. What are you looking for as far as like bet on or bet against spots? Andrew just mentioned, hey, look, this is how the scheduling is going to affect either the starting goalie or the backup goalie. Here's how player X plays against team Y. These are kind of things that once you get in the rhythm of handicapping hockey for all of these years, you're going to have to make some adjustments. So I'm just really curious as to what adjustments you're going to make and what kind of spots are you looking to play on or against? Yeah, and this is something that Andrew and I have discussed uh, almost daily uh, over the last little while uh, leading up to this. The, the way in which you handicap uh, or where, the way in which we handicap uh, NHL January, call it the first week of January, the 13th of till the 20th, is not going to be the same way we handicap uh, the first week of February because this game is just going to change. It's going to evolve. We're going to actually see uh, like patterns are going to eventually emerge. Um, you have to think, um, heading into this season, but we don't have a full training camp. We don't have a full preseason. So players aren't up to game fitness. They're athletes, but trust me, they're not to game fitness. Players aren't going to play their regular, a, a guy like an Austin Matthews or a uh, dry cycle. They're not going to play their regular 24 to 26 minutes, especially in back-to-back -back situations or where they play uh, three games in four nights. They're uh, reduced minutes. Andrew made that fantastic uh, observation of, of, of players uh, of teams having more players uh, on their roster and can bring players in and and those players possibly come in for that third game in four nights so those are things that you're going to have to watch um, with this shortened schedule I hate to say but it's it's sort of like NBA it took us a while to realize with NBA uh, that load management was happening and you would bet uh, not to go off on a tangent you bet the Spurs minus eight and then find out four guys are out and the Spurs are now plus three. These are things that you're going to have to do your research. Uh, if you're not if you're not ready to do your homework, we're doing the homework at Order Wager Talking, and, and and we're doing it for you. But you've got to do your homework and absorb as much information. And there's sites out there that report this stuff, so you really have to. Uh, but with the shortened season, uh, it's going to come up, uh, and there's going to be some play against spots, uh, especially with sides. And I think Andrew will agree there are going to be uh, at times where. You're going to find team A uh, that is maybe minus 180 um, on the money line, and it's just an absolutely bad spot to be taking that team uh, in the third of uh, uh, in the third game uh, over four nights. Sorry, a little stutter there. Andrew, your thoughts on what kind of spots you're looking for? I mean, Carb touched on it, and I feel like this is every single sport, right? Whether it's NBA, college football, right now we're in the midst of bowl season, and I, my biggest bet, now I have six guys that just opted out of the bowl game. Those kind of things are bound to happen here. So what are you looking for as far as the season goes on either bet on or bet against spots? And then give me your overall take on this new season. Exactly, Kelly. I mean, like you said, uh, anyone that's a sports better uh, or sports handicapper would definitely know that some of these spots are, are going to be obvious. For example, the Minnesota Wild, if you check their schedule, Kelly, the first two weeks of their season at minimum, they're starting at home. That's a clear advantage. No matter what sport it is, you'd recognize that. The Montreal Canadiens, they play one game at home, and then they're on the road for about a week and a half, I believe. So that's something you have to recognize. But I touched on this when I was in Vegas and did a video there with you talking NHL. I'm going to touch on it again. Recent form is touched on in every single league, NBA, NFL, college hoops, football. However, I really, really believe that recent form is the most important in the NHL versus any other sport and league because you could have a team that has lost three straight games, but you can take a genuine handicap and say, this team is getting scoring opportunities. This team is getting shots from the right opportunities in the right places on the ice. This team, this line is playing well. This goalie is playing well. 
And I find that versus other sports, uh, it might not be as easy to look at that unless you've actually taken a look at the last couple of games, how those players are performing. So I really feel that this year, when you look at some of these specific spots, when you're playing a team that might be a lot better, um, and let's say you lost two out of the three games, you might go ahead in your next three game set, you know, saying, hey, look, we did lose. We still played some great hockey. So I feel like it's going to be one of those things this year to make sure you're watching the teams, watching the recent form that they're in, uh, and following that as well. I just want to touch again uh, of my overall thoughts for this and the new scheduling, the pricing. So the odds, Karm touched on the odds for just a second, but it's a money line sport here in hockey, just like baseball, right? And I think that when you look at it, you're going to see those backup goaltenders, Kelly. And I think that there's going to be bet on spots for those teams that have their backup. So not always bet against because you're going to get better odds. You look at a top five team in the league, take away the number one goaltender and all of a sudden those odds go down. It's still the same team out there and, and still a pretty half decent goaltender. So it's very important this year. You're looking at the team's recent form, watching how the players are performing and uh, looking for those uh, line changes, seeing who is in and out of the lineup. It's going to be a whole new season. We can't wait. And uh, Carmen, and I can't wait for puck time. Yeah, I'm excited to tune in to puck time while I'm still in my pajamas, 8 a.m., on the West Coast. <laughs> Again, guys, Carm and Andrew both hosting that show. Great free information over on the Wager Talk YouTube channel. $3.99. You can get either one of these guys season long package using NHL 99 as your coupon code. Again, thank you to Carm and thank you to Andrew.